And we are recording. Yep. This is a call to order. This is a German Village Commission meeting hearing. Uh, it is May 4th, 2022. It's 4 01 p.m. We're here at 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. The next business meeting will be Wednesday, May 18th, 2022 at 12 p.m. here at 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. The next hearing will be Wednesday, June 1st, 2022 at 4 p.m. 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. Go ahead and we'll swear in staff. Do it right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do, Morgan Graff. And we'll go on to the introduction of the commissioners present. Starting down with the left side. Jeff Ferriel. Uh, Nithiel. Anthony Hartke, Chair. Teresa Durst. Aaron McCoy. Okay. And we'll go ahead and go into the staff approvals. Do you ratify the minutes? That is the next. Sorry. Right. So we'll do the approvals first. And then All we'll right. To the All right. I didn't, I'm not reading the agenda, obviously. Sure. Any recusals from the staff approvals? And staff approvals start on page seven of your agenda. Hearing none, is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the staff approvals. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Say the motion passes. And then we'll move on to the approval of minutes from last meeting, April 6, 2022. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the meeting minutes from last meeting. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. We'll move ahead to the applications for certificates of appropriateness. Uh, the first set here is the staff recommended applications. Item 1, GV-22-05-021, 360 East Beck Street. Applicant here for 360 East Beck. That's me. Come on. Thanks. Thank you, please me. raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth? All truth, nothing but the truth. Please state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Mary Donahue. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Morning. Proposed work description. Applicant is proposing to replace existing exterior light fixture facing Beck Street. Size is 21 inches tall by 8 inches wide by 10 inches deep. Replacement light fixture will be Sierra traditional wall light fixture, bronze, aluminum, double arm, 27 and a half inches, clear water glass. When application was first submitted, applicant had not provided the measurements of the new proposed light fixture. Staff had requested applicant to provide that information, which applicant has provided. Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate. Um, recommended that the light fixture be installed via mortar joints. The basis of this staff recommendation is German Village guidelines, site lighting, street furniture, pools, fountains, and gazebos, page 122, number three. Anything else to add? I do not. Okay. Questions, comments from the commission? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move the approval as submitted of item GB-22-5-021-360 East Bend Street. Clarification that's mounted at border trades. The, to, with the clarification that it shouldn't be in the brick, but in the attachments in the mortar joints, not the brick. I'll second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to agenda item number two, GV-22-05-022, 133 Jackson Street. Come on up. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name for the record. Seth Winslow. Thank you very much. 
Okay. Proposed work description proposing to install a new 72 inch by 80 inch left hand sliding patio door with screen on the north elevation of the existing non historic shed built in 1982. Door will be a wood clad pella sliding door with wood frame screen. It will have a white exterior to match the approved existing shed color. Staff has identified that the shed is not original to the property. So through previous COA number 82610, there is an existing single man door located on the west elevation. Staff recommends approval with any all clarification to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificate. The state stop of 311611, standards of alteration, number nine. Anything else to add? No, sir. Questions, comments from the commission? Mr. Chair, I move on item number two, GV 2205-022 to approve as submitted. Second. Second. Dealer's choice. Uh, any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number three, GV-22-05-023, 253 Lansing Street. Applicant here for 253 Lansing. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself from this one. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Patrick Ahern. Thank you. Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, proposed work description requesting height variance for previously approved two story, 1152 square foot garage and guest suite. Um, variances are 33, 32, 38 G. Increase the allowable height of detached garage from 15 feet to 22 feet. Adjacent properties exceed 22 feet. And 33, 32, 38 H. Allow habitable space in the second story of the proposed garage. This application was seen in October 2021 and was approved for design number GV 2110030. Staff recommends that the commission recommend approval to the BZA as submitted. This is based off of CC 3116.12, Standards for New Construction, Letter D, E, M, and German Village Guidelines, page 113, New Buildings, Garages Now Buildings, number 1, 2, 4, 5, and 13. Thank you. Anything else to add? Questions, comments from the Commission? I'm just curious, why didn't they come up during the design review? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, the variances weren't seen during that time. It was just for the design specifically. The application referenced an alley Alex gave that was attached, but I don't. I didn't see one in the application. <clears throat> So I mean, I think of an Alex scape as the elevation, so that you can see height of surrounding structures. I don't believe this one did for my recollection. So, Commission McCoy, if we, I mean, we approved the architecture as it is. Be remiss to go back and say that if we're going to look at the alley scape. We should have been looking at that at the design, as opposed to during the zoning. In my I will say the floor plans that were, that were approved before it does show the bathroom, no kitchen, which is what we typically ask for. Mm -hmm. Additional questions or comments? If there are none, is there a motion? I move on application number three, GV-22-05-023-253 Lansing Street, to approve the application as submitted, given that the architecture has already been previously approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
All right, moving on to item number four, GV-22-05-024, 684 South 3rd Street. I have to recuse myself from this one. Wait for the commissioner to be able to come back in this one. I hope we will. <laughs> This one is that the uh, parking changes yeah, on Lake Ovi, and, and we're going to pull one the parking changes. Thank you. Just some clarification. So the uh, floor area ratios the same. But please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yeah. And please state your name for the record. Kevin Lee. Thank you. William Cody. Thank you very much. Are you? Proposed work description requesting zoning variance recommendation for St. Mary's um, German Village Elementary School. The variances are CC3312, parking reduction, variance for six, 58 spaces, CC3332 18D, building lock coverage over 50%. And maximum FAR over 40%. Application was reviewed and approved for new construction in January 2022, GV 2112 032 S672 South 3rd Street. At the past May business meeting, commissioners requested applicant to clarify what are the existing variances and what are the new requested variances. Also, to clarify if it is a parking gain or reduction. Staff recommends that the commission recommend approval to the BZA as submitted. The proposed work is consistent with German Village guidelines, zoning variances, page 139. That's all. Thank you. Anything else to add? Yes. Um, we have some updates to present on some of the information. Um, so the three variances that we put forward to you, the parking, uh, floor area ratio, and the area coverage, we're pulling the area coverage ratio because we used some calculations that were incorrect that overstated the area. Um, in, in calculating it correctly per the Columbus Code, we don't need the area coverage uh, application or the variance. So that is being pulled. Um, we do have a need for the floor area ratio and the parking variance. So speak, speaking first of the floor area, area um, ratio, that stands as written, that 42% statement uh, against the requirement to 40, no changes there. The parking variance does need a bit of explanation and a restatement. First off, the, the parking variance in our in the agenda meeting, the follow-up was to see if we had any addition any variances uh, that existed. We did not. So what we're doing with the parking variance is um, bringing up the past sin of not having any parking variance. Um, so if you look at the new information submitted, the page is what really our submittal is requesting. And the, to top line it for you with without going through the body of the data, the bottom line of it is um, of the uh, there are there's a 193 current parking space deficit. Then in the middle, the variance requirement is for 169 spaces. So by virtue of two changes have we made improvement on the past and again, the past was based on never adding a variance and existing pretty constrained area so the existing versus the proposed is we've made an increase of 24 spaces and so our request is for the 169 that brings up our par parking needs at the conclusion of the project that had been um, approved for the elementary school any questions? Answer them. And we'll, we'll get to speaker slips in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do have one question. Um, so on the proposed parking, adding 26 spaces from the lot across the street. Um, the middle school. The middle school. Yes, sir. Is the middle school's requirements included in the overall calculations? Yes. yes. Any other questions, comments from the commission?
So for my purposes, just to clarify, the the agenda has uh, zoning section G and H, which is the oh sorry, oh, uh, three three one two parking reduction, which you're coming here for, and three three two point one eight D, the building lot coverage. You mentioned the area coverage. That's not needed in this case, correct? The floor area ratio is still required in lot coverage. Lot coverage. Lot coverage. Lot coverage. No questions. We'll jump to speaker slips. And as a reminder, please keep your your comments to three minutes, uh, if you would. Uh, first up is Tim Bibler. And if you please raise your right hand. Just go ahead and tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yeah. Um, I had a clarification. I couldn't hear what they were speaking about. Um, bearing use. Previous bearing use. Did they say there was no record of previous bearings in class? The statement was that there was no record of having a bearings in place previously. Okay. But there were exceeding the amount of parking allowed. At the time, yes. My name is Ken Miller, 772 South Fifth Street, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Durban Village Society. As chair of the Durban Village Parking Committee, I received parking concerns from the neighborhood. Available parking around St. Mary was discussed at our August meeting last year. This was before anyone had knowledge about the variance that is being proposed today. During the public participation at the German Village Society meeting, a good half hour was taken to express parking and traffic concerns on 3rd Street, primarily between Sycamore and Casa. This was also before anyone had knowledge of the variance being proposed today. We are trying to mitigate certain parking. <clears throat> to understand the impact that this variance has on the public parking, one cannot just look at the current proposed variances. Previous parking requirement granted to um, St. Mary has increased street parking demand in this area. Also, before the school took over the Golden Coffee Shop, there were approximately 26 parking spaces for the Golden Coffee Shop and for public parking too. I am up to the book law G. Michael at the German Village Society meeting house. This available parking is now gone, which puts more parking demand on street parking. The additional use of the St. Mary campus building buildings will also impact parking demand. The proposed assembly building can also use, be used as a public event space, for example, wedding reception. The current Berkeley building is proposed to be is proposed to be used as a public medical practice that will also create additional demand for public parking. So the true impact to parking in this area must include the 58 parking space variance, the previous parking requirements of the, the campus, the additional public use of campus use buildings, and the 26 parking spaces lost at the former uh, hobby shop. Parking problems do not just happen, they are the direct result or plan. What consideration is given to protect the property rights of residents and businesses in this area? <coughs> Does the scale of this proposal that would cover over 50% of the property cause permanent damage to this area's historic character? Given all of the current parking problems on Third and Jacob Streets, it was surprise. I was it was a, a surprise to see that the staff recommended this parking variance. My question to staff is: What data was collected, and what criteria was used to make this determination? Also, what is the policy that staff must follow to make such a determination? Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, uh, Pat Bowers. Can you invite the question to begin? Uh, the, the speakers are not here to question. We'll take the question to the applicants. 
Okay, so then you would have that. Yeah. Give me your hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. This comes on orders to study the eight point eight South Fifth Street. Chip has covered a lot, but I just wanted to express a concern in the neighborhood. Which is just our general lack of parking currently. This is the park over towards the old giant eagle. Just the streets are pulled out. And as we get back to a COVID normal, this concern has only got me compounded because with the city development going in place, it's going to put more pressure on parking in the area. Certainly, this is the commission definitely takes this into consideration when looking. At the various variances, and also that the facts being presented to the commission are straightforward and understated. One short. Sure. Thank you. And I will make one comment before we go back to the the applicants. Uh, the question about what uh, criteria did does the preservation department use to make recommendations? Uh, at the present time, that's, that's not so germane to the, to the commission. Um, the, the department only provides recommendations to us. We make the ultimate decision. Uh, so honestly, the, the recommendation from the department is only one piece of criteria that we consider. So uh, and I have a, part of my question was what data did they collect? They made a decision, and I thought that might be helpful for the commission members to know yep. how did they arrive at this decision? Yeah. And I, I can't speak to, to what data they collected at the department. That's a department an interior department uh, conversation. And you can address that question to the department through. Thanks. All right. Uh, any responses to the comments that you've heard? Um, yes, yeah, so I certainly appreciate the comments from the public with regard to what you know are looked upon as hardships in regard to tight area for parking um, during the village. Um, I, I guess I would have a couple comments. Uh, one is what we are truly seeking is codify is uh, the existing condition that we have is just being codified, and that's sort of what we're bringing forward. Um, the second um, question or observation had to do with the Golden Hobby Shop. Golden Hobby Shop spaces, whatever the number of spaces, twenty six spaces that I think uh, Tim had stated that were lost. Um, I don't think those were ever considered public spaces. That was a private property being used. We use it as private property, certainly um, for uh, to uh, support the needs of the campus. Um, when you step back, um, we're, we're really church is the driving factor for the large population um, of uh, spaces that are needed. Um, that happens, you know, on the weekend, on a Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. So if, why we're bringing this forward. Based on the study of the St. Mary project as a whole, we want to be sure that all uh, the variances we require um, are there. And so this is more of a past situation that we're just bringing to be uh, put in a code or to be formalized. Is the assembly use concurrent with the other uses other than the church? Um, Both of the assembly uses are non concurrent in the new buildings. We have the student dining and the gymnasium. And those are also non concurrent with the church. Um, and sort of based on policy, the church, the church is not going to have its usage have a scheduled event going on at the same time with church. So your non -con non concurrent with school operations is 188. Uh, but that does not, does that include assembly? I guess it does. Yeah, the 188 includes the assembly, Berkeley Center. The spec center and the middle school and the rector all together. The 245 is the church only. So I'm trying to get to is the 188 accurate or because you've included the assembly? The 188 is accurate because it included included one of the assemblies that are not concurrent with each other. Okay. Gotcha. So the church being the worst is 245. You got 52 now, which leaves you should have had 193. Variants in place to operate the way you are. Correct. Didn't yeah. happen for some reason. Correct. So you're now 245 minus 76, and you're asking for 169, which is better than what should have been in place before. 
I got another question that we're looking at the, the site drawing of proposed parking. You're showing the rectory building moved. No, it's incorrect. It's um, we were not permitted to move that. We're not moving it. Um, the rear addition was permitted to remove. I agree, but but how does that affect your parking and access, et cetera, based on a drawing that's not accurate? For the, the drawing might not be accurate, but the numbers are accurate. Okay. Based on what we've submitted for civil drawings to the, the city. Yeah, I think your reference was the rectory was moved. It's not being moved. I don't know what oh, that shows it. I, this one doesn't at. show it here. Oh, the that is oh, I'm sorry. I looked at the yeah, yeah they are. Oh, you're, really? you're correct that that is incorrect. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. That one's incorrect. Floor so, area ratio is. So, does that mean the parking layout is incorrect or is the parking layout correct? The parking layout is not necessarily even shown on this drawing. It's, it's with the city as their, with their document. This is just showing where the area is. So, the highlighted area is the correct area where the parking lot is going. So are the number of parking spaces correct? The number of parking spaces are correct based on what we have submitted to the city. Yes. So let me make sure I understand. The numbers are correct, but the drawing of the location of the rectory is wrong, and the drawing depicting the location of the parking is wrong. It's, it's not wrong, it's just not. So it's not an accurate depiction of parking, the parking locations. So we can characterize as wrong or not accurate. <laughs> I'm not sure there's a difference there. Okay. And I, I think the point is that in all the shaded areas, that is where parking exists. We didn't give you a, uh, a, a lane, a parking grid that shows in by count where you can count all those, but, but that is the area where parking exists. That is actual in terms of its area. So, so moving forward with, with the numbers being accurate, is that the, the yeah. important part of what matters? Yes. It, existing on the on the church adjacent property, not considering the, the school across the street. Previously existing, there are 52 spaces shown. Proposed, 50 spaces shown. Bring in the parking lot from the school across the street, where previously used to be Golden Hobby. That's where the two now missing spaces are coming from, and then an additional 24 from that lot going into these calculations. You kind of mentioned 32 plus 18 is 50. Okay, I, I, I went to the original application and kind of 45. I'm working off of numbers we yeah, but I, I can't because I don't know that this layout is right. I've got to go with the numbers correct. So you're saying a difference of three. So I'm saying there's, you're going with the numbers shown on the, on the drawings here. There's existing 52, propose 50 plus 26. So on the contiguous site, there's a loss of two, but you're gaining 26 from the old Golden Hobby. Okay. Okay. So does the existing number of spaces that you're providing um, that provides for all the necessary school staff parking during the day? Yes. Space so we have to, yeah. plus spaces. For yeah, I told you. Yeah, there's and there's extra spaces. The staff does not consume a significant amount of parking. Which is, which is one thing we see in our data that the number that we actually have to park is far less than 
what we're what is being required by the code to state. Looking at the numbers on the submitted paper, as far as the required spaces for conditions, existing versus proposed, required for church versus proposed stays the same, Berkeley stays the same, directory stays the same, assembly stays the same. The only required versus proposed that changed is the school amount going from 38 required to existing. 49 for the proposed. So an increase of 11 spots. But as far as the concurrent, non concurrent, that's a different conversation. So with the, with the growth, the expansion, there's an 11 for the numbers, an 11 stall difference. And there's a 16 stall addition to what's there currently. And I can't can't speak to whether Golden Hobby had allowed public parking or not. At the end of the day, it's a property. It was sold to another individual. You can't we can't enforce public parking on a property owner. It would be like telling somebody that they have to allow public parking in the driveway in this situation. It seems to me that the school is not appreciably adding to the load of required parking. And that where the parking deficit occurs is when ch churches and use, and um, that's been ongoing for a very long time. So I'm I'm kind of sympathetic with bringing the school into a variance, you know, allowing approving the, the variance request. We would typically we would we would or gently grant the or recommend the variance for the existing condition as it's, as it's been in the configuration as far back as any of us have been around. Yeah. So that would be a variance request of 193. It's not 169. Right. I, I do have one question. The addition that has been approved to the school building. Is for assembly use, correct? So I'm seeing the assembly count, the one to 60 assembly resulting in 112 space requirements. That's not changing from existing to proposed. Is there a space inside the building that was previously considered assembly that is now just simply moving to a location? Uh, the gymnasium was previously considered assembly and it was it's much larger than the new space that's being added, and they are not in current pieces. Okay. So there'll never be an assembly in the gymnasium and an assembly in the city bank. I think that's why that would be. Why they're they are not concurrent. Why they would not be doing them? Um, because usually when you have an event in a larger space, um, you wouldn't want an event going on in the gymnasium because the staff of the school is not equipped to handle that type of. What a good one event that required both spaces. They both use the same entrance and it would interfere with each other on bathroom counts, and there are several code issues that would come to play. That would restrict that use of both spaces at once within the building. So. Normally, I'd be worried. Normally, I'd be worried about the prospect of a future owner changing. Yep. But I guess yes, that's I not that's a concern happen. for a mine in this situation. Although there are schools in the diocese that have been closed and converted to other purposes. This 
crystal looks like it's headed in the opposite direction. I'm, I'm struggling to find my, find a position for myself where I, I would say that going from 193 effective deficit to only 169 effective deficit would be disadvantageous. Logically, you're correct. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Pibbler raised a question that leaves me a little uncertain, and I'm, I don't have my hard copy of the guidelines here to page through to look for it. I don't believe there's anything in the guidelines that addresses this issue on bear, our recommendation of variances affecting this kind of a parking situation. Are you acquainted with anything in there? I wouldn't say the guidelines. Uh, I would say as far as code references, um, there's the A through G. Yes, yeah, so it's so. the general, the general code, uh, with code standards. Okay, that's why we recommend. Yeah, I understand. Any issues with the uh, floor area ratio? I have no problem with two percent. Forty percent, two percent. Typically within our range of typically on the lot coverage stuff, yeah. we would say 50, 52, as maybe right. 55, but yeah, I don't think there had been below above 55, but 52 has been approved a lot of places. Floor area ratio similar but different. Floor, anything else down there on your end? No. There's no other questions. Is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, on uh, item GV 2205024684 South 3rd Street, I move to make a recommendation on the zoning variances. Second. And we do need to read those in. Uh, first variance is CC 3312 parking reduction. And what's the exact number? Are we still cheap for 58? 169. 169 is huge. That's based on. Should have been 193. Yeah, original original 193 requested 169 per the current calculations. Yeah. Go ahead. And that's CC 3332.18 delta per oh, we need the FAR. Is that the same code coverage for the floor area ratio? Uh, yeah, the floor area ratio. Also FAR, within, yeah. within subsection D. Yes. FAR okay. is the floor average. Yeah. yeah. All right. And the same mm -hmm. 33.32.18 three, 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 D for the floor area ratio. Be 42%. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to continued applications. Get the permission to get us back in. It'll be item number five, GV 22 03 013 Bravo 304 East Casa Street. Please take a seat until we can get our commissioner back. All right. And if you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, please state your name for the record. Joseph Tannery. Thank you. Morgan. Uh, 
proposed work description. Applicant uh, is proposing to enlarge the existing garage door opening and install a new motorized nine foot by seven foot white insulated steel garage door with windows or an approved GBC alternative. This application was split from GB 2203013 at the past March hearing. Number GB 2203013A was approved for the restoration of the existing garage. At the past May business meeting, Commission staff requested that a sample of material be brought in for the Commission to review, as was requested at the March hearing. Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificate with conditions that the garage door be selected from the examples that have been sent by staff or similar for final approval in lieu of proposed steel garage door. This is based off, or the work is generally consistent with 311611 standards for alteration number nine. Thank you. Anything else to add? Yeah, I wasn't aware that um, the recommendation was going to be, I guess, I, with what I was proposing. Is that correct? Is that accurate? Yes, staff is recommending that you install a wood door in lieu of the steel door, but that is staff recommendation. Oh, okay. Report. This yeah. is open for discussion. With the committee. Yeah. And so, in respect, well, I was just making sure I understood. Um, You're correct. <laughs> So, so it has been sort of a long process for my wife and I. Um, we got cited with the city of Columbus. Um, our shed is in complete disrepair. And so we went through the process of having a designer help prepare the drawings and uh, sort of do the best we could to get some parking because we are right across the street from the uh, Giant Eagle development. And um, so we, we started with a conceptual review, I think last year, and it was clear that, you know, the commission wanted us to do the best to rehab the existing structure and keep the, you know, the features um, similar to what exists today. Um, and so th that's what we're doing. We're resetting it with wood. Um, and I admit that the garage door that we're proposing is a deviation from being wood. Um, but sort of and respectfully and at pleading that you guys at least consider the alternative and we're willing to take extra steps. I think in the in the past, um, um, other applicants have sanded down garage doors sort of for a texture that was um, more satisfactory to the commission. We'd be willing to do that. Um, so that's all I'd like to add. Sorry to sort of go on a ramble, but no worries. And you brought a sample? Yes. We could take that. As discussed in previous meetings, um, we have approved alternative materials in the past. Mm -hmm. um, they came down to the texture. Uh, faux finish versus a smooth finish. Typically, we go for the smooth finish. If you had a wood door, the wood finish would be smooth. Mm -hmm. That grain that's on the faux finish doors is meant to simulate a grain, but you wouldn't see that on the wood door. Yeah, and so that's sort of, you know, I wish I'd put it into my proposal. That's something we'd be more than willing to do to sand that down and, you know, get it certified or have someone on staff make sure that it is, because this is has the little brain that would need sanded down. Yeah. Is my understanding. So the ones that were sanded down were a composite that couldn't be sanded. This is a metal finish. Okay. With with the grain. If you try to sand this down, you're not going to have any kind of good results. Okay. Um, if you're looking for a steel door, there are options out there of having a steel door with a, a wood a thin veneer wood overlay. Okay. That gets that the wood look that we're looking for historically, smooth finish, um, but still gets the steel and insulation you're looking for. Um, there are composites out there that we found where the trim is smooth. The panel itself had a, had a very light um, dimpling texture to it, but we mm -hmm. identified that the panel was okay. It's really the trim that really what stands out typically. Okay. Um, and there's a couple, I know, Morgan, you have samples of those that we've approved in the past. One that I know that we sanded down is 577 Cedar, and that's one where they did install a door with the faux grain. They sanded out the, the finish. It was passable. It wasn't ideal, but it, it got to where it needed to be. Okay. It took quite a bit of effort to get that finish right. Okay. Um, that was 577. 577 Cedar. 
I don't want to speak to the entire commission, but I would yeah. say that this, we're out the bat seeing metal, metal panel, you're not going to get a sand it down just because it's stamped metal. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I would not approve of this product. Mm -hmm. Any other disagreements or comments? No, but I, I think you can get a metal door without the green. Metal door without the green? Yeah. And to maybe, maybe a heavier gauge steel. What's that? Maybe a heavier gauge steel. Okay. Mainly the grain used to, to strengthen the sheeting. A lot of times at the thin gauge, they make it very dimply to keep it from oil canning and, and waving and the okay. heat expansion. So a thicker gauge eliminates a lot of that necessary dimpling and surface texture. Well, we have approved the pebble. Small. Yeah. We have approved small pebble texture. Okay. Think one so I think you're on track. Just get switch gears a little bit okay one other comment is with the panelized doors that's come up before um typically a, a traditional wood door would not have that raised panel instead mm -hmm. typically it would be a, a smooth panel and then applied trim around it so this would be flat and flush in the center there okay so this decorative would not be typical of what we would approve on any kind of garage door there has been Quite a bit installed in the village. I'd say 99% of them are without um, approval from the commission. Um, it happens. <laughs> I appreciate it. We, we have appreciate approved, that. We have a recognition. We have approved them also on uh, grant. And that was going from an existing panel door to, to a, re a replacement place. panel door. So there was a panel door there already. Your in your condition, there, there is no existing panel door to use as kind of a a springboard back to panelized door. But for me, the fact that that exists to me doesn't prevent it happening on another door. On Grant? On Grant, on Casa, yeah. wherever. To me, the ship has sailed. Yeah, and I, that's my that's my personal opinion. I, I appreciate it. I'm just trying to, yeah, get on track and get something that is acceptable. We we have aluminum doors with translucent panels. We have everything on, all across the board. Oh, I mean, especially in my, I mean, yeah, where my house is, I mean, it's it's not things that would get approved. Yeah, I I suspect if you walked around the village and looked at looked at garage doors, there are more than were not approved than that were approved. Yeah, and it's a done deal. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I understand. So do we have a list of doors, steel doors or wood doors that have been approved that meet, you know, the smooth grain? And so I know. So there's a CHI door yeah. that we've approved, um, which I believe is the wood veneer on top of steel. Um, there's a clope door. It's like the Co Canyon Ridge. Oh, Coachman. There's is Coachman. And there's the Canyon Ridge. Too. I think that's the one I see. Too. It's the Canyon Ridge. Yeah, the Canyon Ridge is 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 very expensive. expensive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm so, and I mean, yeah. Just to be frank, I mean, I got a quote. I mean, it's fourteen thousand dollars. It's just something we can't afford. Yeah. There was. For a single door. Yep. So CHI was one. Yep. Is yeah, I think I, I received the Canyon Ridge one. That's the only one. I, I'm not. Yeah, and that friend. was more for style of what okay. we approved, not of the product. We can. Yeah. So if there's a yeah, it would be super helpful if I could. I'll, I'll look. The, the CHI, the company. Yes. Okay. And the other one is the the Clopes Clope Coach Coachman. The, the the one at five seven seven cedar again start out it's a, a through material so it's the same color all the way through as opposed to a painted surface so when it's sanded down that color stayed um, I believe I have to contact figure out what what vendor it was what manufacturer it was I believe they had a smooth finish option they just screwed up in their ordering 
Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember that. I can't remember, I can't remember what, the, what the vendor was. Gotcha. Um, Bill Hugus um, is the architect for that project. He may know him a long time. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, and then the, the other option is a flat, flat steel door. Um, you can talk to the carpenter. I know with the price of wood these days, it's ridiculous, but they can apply a veneer uh, to those as well. Okay. Okay, great. And, and if you do find another vendor out there that's not so textured, we're always open to, to other products. Okay. Much appreciated. Sure. I, had one. I think that's it. So could I can I continue this or table this and, and try to come back with something more acceptable? Would you like to continue? Yes. Okay. On item GV220313B304 East Cockfield Street, I move to continue. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I have it. Thank you, Commissioners. Use your sample back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to item number six, I need to recuse myself. Commissioner Hill, can you take over? Certainly. I take it you're here for number six? Yes, sir. Raise your right hand and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I do. And state your name. Jack Reynolds. I'm an attorney with Smith and Hale, 37 West Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio. What are we doing? The both work descriptions. It's continued application. Yes. What? Um, in CC 3332031A to allow a three unit dwelling structure and CC 3312049B to reduce number of parking spaces from two to zero for the third unit. Applicant has decided to proceed with these two variances to solve the third unit issue for the property and will return to resolve the lot, the lot's existing variances once they receive a PIN survey of the site. The following is taken from the unapproved April 6, 2022 German Village Commission hearing minutes. Commissioner comments recommend survey to be submitted. Survey should have been done with the purchase. Staff recommends that the commission recommend approval to BZA as submitted. The proposed work is consistent, um, is somewhat consistent with German Village guidelines and zoning variances, page 139. And uh, at the request of, of Anthony, we looked into doing a pin survey. And we checked around the surveying community and we're told that it would take anywhere from two to four months in order to get a pen survey done. So we've asked to have it, get, we're on the list to have it done. And so uh, we decided to simply move ahead uh, with the unit confirmation. So we're here today just to simply say we've got a unit that was uh, added back in 1969. Uh, Mr. Lanning was the owner from 69 to 71. Uh, we actually have a, a lady who moved into the unit uh, at 360 Jackson Street back in 1970. And in 1970, the unit was there. So Mr. Lanning, although the property was either zoned AR1 or R4, failed to get the proper uh, permits from the city of Columbus and converted the unit. And so we subsequently found out this past year when we were trying to do some updating to the, to the building that we needed to confirm the number of units to the units that are there today. So uh, we recognize that in order to conform any of the area boundaries, we need that pen survey. I did go out and look and, uh, you know, I saw where Anthony's pen was and we do need to confirm both the front and side yard uh, setbacks, so we can come back to you with an accurate request. And I can answer any questions, but uh, you know we recognize the need to have it done. We had a mortgage survey, and we were trying to work off a variety of different uh, uh, maps, elements, and it didn't didn't work. Commissioners, any questions, concerns, issues? This is basically to legitimize an existing condition. Yes. yes. Karen, anything? No. Mr. Carroll? No. 
questions or concerns. Sir, a motion, please. I move on application number six, GB 22 dash 04 dash 020360 Jackson Street to ratify the variance recommend or recommend the variance uh, as requested. Requested. Yeah. <laughs> Too many cards. As applied. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, folks. Yes. Thank you, Governor. You're welcome. Move ahead to item number seven, GB 22 04 022 239 Lansing Street. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, but the truth. I do. I'm, I'm Seth Janetsky. I am the owner of the property's real estate agent. Thank you, Thank you much. Morning. Proposed work description. Applicant is proposing two scenarios for the commission to review. Um, one is to preserve and restore existing sandstone foundation. Work to be done internally. Existing sandstone foundation would either be preserved, restored, replaced upon completion. Contractor proposed to ex to excavate an approximately four foot wide opening from the exterior to bring in out materials and equipment needed. Excavate the compromised soil and bring in poured concrete to support the existing foundation. Current decorative grates on North Wall be cleaned, painted, and placed in the same location. Scenario two: Remove existing foundation, rebuild foundation. Work to be done: rebuild the um, rebuild the northeast and west foundation walls. Structural engineer has deemed property unsafe and dangerous collapsing. Foundation will be rebuilt with concrete block walls and waterproofing systems being installed. Construction will consist of excavating around the northeast and west walls to allow the structural soaring, removal, and rebuild of foundation. Sear dimensions to remain the same. Depth of new foundation to be six feet below grade. Approximately one to two feet of foundation will have a sandstone veneer that will be created from the existing foundation. Color to match existing or GVC standard. Current decorative grates on north wall will be cleaned, painted, and placed in the same location as well. At the past May business meeting, commission were, commissioners were in agreement with scenario one to preserve and restore the existing foundation proper reinforcement of the existing conditions. They requested further drawings, which applicant has submitted. The following is taken from the unapproved April 6, 2022, Durham Village Commission hearing minutes. Let me get my pages in order. One second. Um, recommended contacting structural engineers that have experience with historic basements. Contact GBS for resource lease with contractor. Commissioner suggests ensuring a foundation with poured concrete to stabilize all previous similar work has been done internally. Suggested engineering report with separate design for shoring and waterproofing. Staff recommends approval of scenario one to reuse existing foundation material and rebuild foundation like for life while reinforcing the existing conditions of the crawl space. This is based off of 31.16.11, standard of alteration, number two, number six, and German Village Guidelines Foundations, page 33, number seven. Anything else to add? Um, yeah, I just wanted to. We came came back with two scenarios. Um, our we do have a, a buyer in place that's been great enough to hang hang in hang in this with, with hang in there with us for the last few months as we try to get this figured out. Um, I think they would uh, they prefer scenario two if we could try to keep the we, we would keep the exist we would try to I think we would while the work was being done remove the. It's the existing layers of sandstone foundation, but then ultimately create a ledge in front of it. So it would be restored and replaced, but we would have the full poured concrete new walls behind it. So what, what would be a visible above ground would be uh, what is there today. We'd restore it and replace it back. Um, just given conversation from the last meeting, um, not sure if that would be approved by you guys, but would be preferred by, by us. Um, and scenario one, we would do all of the work internally, but we would need a, a four feet full that we need to excavate for the contractor to get in, get in and out, bring materials for the concrete. Um, but was there, that is all on my end. Questions, comments from the commission? So just to clarify, option one is all internal work. Um, correct, other than we need to excavate 
an area, preferably on the north side, to in order to bring in and out materials because we're going to have to remove the stairwell, and it's not ideal to be bringing things in and out from from inside the house. My comment, I'd obviously prefer scenario one. Okay. Um, demolishing the foundation, then replacing is not historic preservation. It's pseudoism, in my opinion. Okay. It's not for the guidelines, et cetera. I, I would say four foot maximum, but I think you probably can do it less with the opening. Okay. I think the, the contractor said he could do. Four feet. Yes, he asked me to ask for four feet. So I think that that's. I I would say fair. we would ask him to do less, but no. For me. Okay. I would I'll, maximum of four. We'll have a good fit. Try to do make yeah. the hole as small as possible. I've seen it done with less. Yeah. Is there a proposed location for this four foot? Um. Really, really, what we're, we just we want to get approved something approved today, and we will we will do that. Wherever you would like to for that to be done, the contractor thought it would be easier to do it on the north side, so they could just it would be closer to the street, closer to their vehicles. North side would be in the front facade. Correct. Yes. You have to create a header in order to keep the top layers of of sandstone intact. That would be above grade, but what would be removed of the foundation would be below grade. Makes sense to me. So that'd be going through the right of way, sidewalk, and everything else to get down. Correct. Yep. You have to repick the top or the concrete squares right now. You'd have to replace those. Is going to use a conveyor belt to get the material out? I, I believe so. Yes, yeah. that's, that's the plan. So my 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 one caution. Probably gas line. Into that sidewalk there, potentially. You, there, I believe there is. I know that we we've already replaced a water line into the house there that was corroding. Okay. So I know that the water line is right there on the northeast corner. So we wouldn't do it there. We'd probably have to. We'd be we'd be make sure that we stay away from the utilities. Instead of the gas line, I see the gas meter right there at the corner of the house in the picture. Show that runs along the front of the house under the sidewalk. So. Yep. Trying to get down into the front of the house, you're going to have to contend with the gas line yeah, right there. The contractor, they would get a hold of Columbia, obviously, before we did anything. Good. All before you dig. So my, my only comment to that aspect is, if there is a problem with getting it from the front, you're going from the side, if you're already planning on having to remove some of the porch, which in this case, yes, and you would not, if the porch does get removed, that'd be a great spot to put a four foot gap because then anything you put back, it's blocked by a porch. That's a great at the end idea. Of the day. If the porch is not being removed, then it's kind of kind of pick a location kind of thing. I, that, I would think that if it's if there's too many utilities there on the north end, we'll be going out the that would be what the west side there where that porch is, that would be removed and rebuilt. How much does he think he has to excavate out the front to get the conveyor belt out? It's going to be, even, it's it's going to be pretty. Here. It's going to be pretty vertical getting it up and out of there. They they are going to have to they're going to have to create a new footer on the inside. Mm -hmm. There's going to be that other. So I think they're going to have to dig. I think at least a foot down. I believe the plans call for it might be two feet of yeah, earth okay, that, there to, to me, that's that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not. You know, but the around yeah. the perimeter of the three sides, they're going to we're not looking at 36 or 48 inches to get the conveyor up. I'm not, I'm not sure on the, on the technical aspects, but yeah, we'll be surprised. And hopefully they wouldn't have to do that. Be less expensive on my yeah. client's end for sure. As the intent, so when you cut that opening, obviously the, the house. The, the foundation wall currently is exposed has a large layer on top of it or some kind of layer on top of it. Um, yeah, and then to bring it back out to that layer, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think that we wouldn't. All the, the new concrete walls that are going to go, I mean, they're just going to go right up to what's there existing. 
to really hold all of that in place and stop any earth from trying to slide into the basement. Um, but yeah, what's what's there right now? I mean, we would we do whatever you, you wanted us to do, but I, we talked about putting up the subterranean that that wouldn't move. What's what's there right now? We'd have to create a header so that those top layers of sandstone that are above grade would gotcha. stay intact throughout the entire process. Gotcha. Yeah. Questions, comments? Um, so out of curiosity, why does the uh, buyer prefer the other option? It's going to make it nicer, bigger basement for oh, the for the buyer. Yeah. Scenario one. Scenario one myself. Mr. Chairman, an item 07 GV 2204 02 B2. 239 Lansing Street. I am moved to approve as submitted with the option of uh, uh, scenario one. Second. Thank you. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on to new applications. Uh, item number eight. GB-22-05-025-567 South Fifth Street. Yeah, I wonder if I might make a request. I've got the sample of the door coming. Okay. Uh, he's not here yet. Should I switch with number nine? Or you guys want to just see it when yeah, it comes? Yeah, we can, we can put you on the table. Back to you. All right. Sure. All right. Uh, put you on the table. Moving on to item number nine, GV-22-05-026, 36 Lansing Street. Go ahead, please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Yes. Say your name for the record, please. George Elch. Thank you. Keith Layton. Thank you very much. Morning. Okay. Proposed work description, applicant proposing to install a new roof over existing deck, which is in between main home and detached garage. Will be, roof will be constructed by um, nine property solutions shingles. <laughs> Drop Roman numeral for a second. Um, shingles will match the asphalt shingles on the garage and the house as well as to match the paint color to match the trim on the house as well as the garage. Application was originally seen as a conceptual application number GB 2204029 at the April hearing. Following is taken from the unapproved April 6, 2022, Durban Village Commission hearing minutes. Commissioners were in agreement of not connecting the garage and main structure since German Village typically does not allow connections between two structures. If connected garage would add square footage of the living space. Commissioners recommended looking into adding a cantilevered umbrella or a retractable awning or roof structure that does not engage the garage. Some suggested on sliding in a pergola that was not connected. Canvas would be could be installed as well for sunshade and rain. The depth of the cover seen from the elevation. Commission commented saying that it appears to be too solid and makes it too top heavy. Current design makes it more of a structural or architectural feature. Commissioner suggested that a roof can be installed either connected to garage or main home. If connected to the main home, the roof can overhang over the garage, but not be attached. Roof line should be a low pitch to appear more flat and contemporary. Commissioner Harkey suggested submitting a site plan to indicate property line and talk to code. The back portion of the proposed roof is on property line. Materials may need to be fire rated. The past May business meeting, commissioners asked for applicant to clarify if the columns will be going through the overhang of the garage. Applicant has confirmed that is what they are proposing based off the commissioner's feedback. Commissioner requested staff to look into various information to verify the addition of the new roof over the deck, um, of the new roof over the deck, if that would add to the lock coverage and if that would need a variance. According to BBS, the addition of the roof would not impact the lock coverage. Staff does not support the design with the porch roof. Um, and columns going through the garage eaves. Commission should offer design feedback and continue the application for further discussion at a future meeting. This is based off of 3116.12, Standards for New Construction, Letter F and K. Anything else to add? I, again, just want to add the same thing I said at the last meeting. Uh, this is important to my wife and I, as this is our only entertainment space. We don't have a backyard. Um, this is... This is the only place we can entertain. The grill is out there. You can see the 
lawn chairs and stuff. Uh, we spent a lot of time out there. In the summertime, it gets brutally hot. We were just looking for some sort of uh, covering from the uh, from the elements. So that's why we're interested in this project. Questions, comments from the commission? So are you okay with the recommendation to move the uh, support post closer to the house so they don't go through the roof of the garage? Just have a longer overhang. Right from the seating. Could put one at one end and most of the other end. So the 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 problem that he's having is the, the furniture that he has it because it's a limited amount of space. If I come in a foot, it pretty much alleviates any furniture that he's already currently have. So that's at the front and the back, not in between them. Yeah, that with well, the the closer to the property line, that's where all the furniture sits because that's where the deck ends. Which is at the end of the garage and the end of the home. And there's only two foot or something from most property mm -hmm. line. Which get a site there for four like that. Yeah, it comes right off the corner of the house, goes to the garage. So if I come in a foot, foot and a half, it kind of alleviates that whole area because you're limited on the length from the back to the front as far as how much space you can put that under roof. I thought if I went through that I could make that look really nice with flashing and Make it look as if you didn't see that, except this roof just came down, did not touch the garage. The double two by is almost touching the garage roof as it is by, by your drawing. Yes. You said not to connect that because before I had the actual wall of the garage supporting the roof. And I was going to connect those two. So I separated. I just want to get that post closer to the garage. Which means I'd be going through that overhead. We can cap that off and make it look just like the rest of the trim on the house or the garage itself. I.e., I'd be painting that same color as the garage, so blend in. So how many posts will you have? Two. Just one on each end. Yes, ma'am. So, so the deck currently is 18. 18 feet long, and this roof is 14 feet, starting from the... Yes, and it may end up being 13 total length from the back to the front. There's an electrical box that comes into play, and I want to be at least a foot away from that. I, mean, I, I hate to say it, but this is architectural language semantics. You, I'm pushing. You're, you're, yeah, you are. I know you are. You're doing the best I can. I'm trying to have respond to you without. You're not solving. Trust me. It's a, so I mean, I really want this. <laughs> you might as well just lay the beam on top of the roof and screw the posts. It wouldn't look any different. Trying to, but it's not attached. Yeah, I know, and that's what I'm saying. It's architectural language semantics. Not, it's not flying for me. I'm sorry. I, I'm doing the best I can. I, I know. I'm fighting for my client here. I <laughs> totally get it. I totally get it. Do you know when this garage is built? Um, based off the same board, it looks like 1920. That's first referenced in 1921-1922. They should be under previous material for this packet as well. I see it down there. Half sheet. Oh. 
I'm just trying to find myself a situation where I, I would I'd approve basically either resting a double double beam on a roof or penetrating down through an overhang and over garage in any other location. I, I'm just not seeing that. So this would set a horrible precedent. It may or may not be limited to the size of the space. And I'll say typically architecturally covering that up would not be something that we're connecting. Connecting is not something that we would do, which we'd say before. Kind of saying that, okay, if we're not connecting, it's okay. Visually, it's still connecting. We're penetrating through the roof. It's definitely touching. I'm finding it hard to say this is not still connecting the two. If, if, the, if the columns were pushed back, so it wasn't going through that overhang, I'd be okay with Like it. right up against it. Okay, because like it's like a one of my concerns for you though is, is also the gutter. You're going to have the gutter there, and how, if, right now with the way it is, you have to flash the entire thing. Mm -hmm. How do you prevent water ice dams from happening right there? Well, I would only have the two four by fours going through, which I could flash an ice guard. But with how you have it now, your, your double beam is only this much away from the top of the roof. That's going to ice up. You're going to have to flash the entire system. Which gets back to the connection, not connect. I know. I, <laughs> I know we're going to do my best. I'm trying to like work through the ver verbiage correctly so that maybe because it would look a lot better if I could just connect can, it. Can we go back to why not an awning? That's what he's looking for. He wanted something permanent. Okay. All right. And based on the width that we have to take that to, uh, grant, granted, the overhang would be great, but. If I got from the house to where I put my first post, we're kind of like really just in the way in a 10 foot section. If I'm anywhere near that foot, foot and a half, it is now, now you have nothing between that and the garage and you can't set a table there. And again, we're at limited space. So question from the plan perspective, you're only extending it 14, 13 feet, whatever you, is there a reason why you're not trying to go the entire length of the deck so you have the entire deck covered? Yes, it's the electrical uh, coming in to the meter. And I'm not messing with that. A bunch of power lines too. That's where the main meter comes in. So I don't want to get close to that. That's see, good. See, yeah. But he didn't hit the lottery yesterday. So. <laughs> Question. So the, the the standard is you can't connect the garage. That's just a never gonna happen. Primary structure to a secondary, yeah. yeah. It's gotta make that look good. <laughs> yeah, if the electric wasn't there and I could could go around that and extend it all the way so that it looks like it's part of the whole structure. But I don't know if that's going to change. We're, we're still going through something. Here's a follow up question. And if, yeah, go ahead, then. Sorry. If right now that called bottom left post, mm -hmm. right now the location of that, if it was away from the overhang, it's where the furniture is, like you mentioned. In the rear, yes, mm -hmm. the top part. In the, so the upper left. Upper left, location. correct. So he's got this L. It's it's perfect from the house to the garage to I mean I'm, you might have that much space between the garage and the furniture, which means I'd have to move the furniture from top closer to the bottom so I could get a post out there and then that just shifts everything this way and then if I got a post out in the middle out here, 
because I want to make it as wide as I can so you can walk around all this stuff. So the actual space is only about 10 feet. Yep, yep. Now I'm looking at the picture on page three, which I think shows the condition. Can you put the posts at the far ends, so just not with the whole thing? Just have them being exposed? Would that miss the left post? Oh, and shift it this way? Yeah, so we're looking at the, that. The roof that's getting in the way of the lines or the beam? Exactly it would be the posts themselves that would be in the way, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I could dig uh, off the deck. Put posts in the back, but we're still in the front. So if I have one up against the house, it would be right just past the window, up against the house here. So I end up with four posts instead of two. The idea was to try to eliminate visually. The idea was just to have like a, an awning, if you will, and try to eliminate posts because this is not a very big space. But structurally, you can't do that, obviously. So part of me. So see how he's got that turned this way? That's actually shifted this way against the house because he has the other furniture closer to the window. That's the best way to utilize that space. Well, it seems like you're going to have to put the post as close to the fence as possible and just put mm -hmm. the furniture in because I don't think you're going to get an approval to run the post up through the garage overhang. I'm feeling like we're. Yeah. So then it becomes a matter of figuring out where your posts go that will allow you the most flexibility in your furniture layout. And, and the, the cold statement, and I, I don't mean to sound callous, no, but fine. I'm pushing the, the, fa fa the factual statements here is right now the, the, the concern is, is furniture versus architecture yeah. and allowing temporary things to drive a permanent installation. It's like saying I have uh, a huge flat screen TV. My, my wall is not big enough. They forgot to blow out the back of my house to make more room for my TV. I have a board stretcher for that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to that aspect, it's like, well, I, I get the concern. Um, if you can push that post as far back as possible, if you're doing a, a four by four, probably post, you're losing four inches. Looking at that picture of the table. It wouldn't affect the seating port portion, it affect the table and sitting over there. So if you mm -hmm. push that up four inches, is that a deal killer? To me, I think that could be acceptable to get the thing that we want. That's kind of where I'm standing. I think there's opportunity. It just may not be the most perfect solution for everything. So uh, just to kind of question, if I were able to go right up next to the gutters with the post here and a post here, I could do this design then. You guys would be okay with that. I'm okay. We just do not want to go, we're not going through the roof and touching or any of that crap. Punching through the roof just to Probably open the big can of worms. I don't think you want to go down that road. So I can't prove it. So I don't like the visual from the street, no matter how you do it, whether you attach or you don't attach it, but it seems to me it, you might be able to Fiddle with the gutters. So you didn't have a piece of gutter right at the place where the post is. No, can't do that. Okay. No, because the way the drain, you would screw up the drainage and we oh, would yeah, right back to icing. The yeah. Yeah. Then I'd have to go on the roof and we're back to original so where I said really I could just really put a peak here stable. and just, you know, but we're not, we're back to. Yeah. Okay. Right back to where we started. Put a dormer on it. <laughs> well, I. I'll just reiterate the I'd be thinking about an awning or an umbrella or a rectangular umbrella if this were me. And then it's a I know you want something permanent, but the fact that it's permanent is what's disturbing to me. It's changing the whole appearance of the front of the house. And if they got an umbrella, we don't even have to review it. <laughs> Not that this matters, but he does have a six foot fence sitting up on like the height of the deck, so you don't really see him here at all. You would just see this. Yeah, you'll see the. Yeah, that's what you would see. Yeah. Okay. I mean, 
I mean, I understand what you're saying. I've actually, when I lived out in Pickerington many, many years ago, I had one of those huge umbrellas. I wasn't a fan. It faded within the first summer. Um, the sandbags that had to secure it were ugly. I appreciate the thoughts, but yeah, you got to replace those umbrellas every two or three years. Well, they don't. They don't get faded. They acquire a patina. Crust. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just paint it then. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for your time. Oh, well, let them roll. Would you like so options that we, we can vote on it as as submitted? We want to amend it. We can vote on an amended application. Um, we want to amend it to move the post in. We can vote. I think you can get that passed right now. It gives you something to move forward with. Uh, or again, like I said, we can vote on what's currently proposed. Yeah. I'd like to see if we can, if you guys agree, I would move the post in and we continue with the same plan. If you approve that, I'll move forward with the building. So, I, I've got one thing I'd like to add, though, sure. and, and you're not looking at it because you're at that section, is enclosing the gable end of that. That's typically what was done in the village with shed roofs off the back of houses. I did that originally, but one of the suggestions, if I recall from the last meeting, was you wanted something as thin as possible and not well. We were looking at like that. We were looking at horizontal. Yeah, but I mean, but that's what I originally but, started. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying you've got you've dropped it way down below the gable end, the edge, the even. Yeah, I'm just saying. I I think I think it would, and they may disagree with me. I think it would look better with a vertical siding that was started at the bottom of that eave and enclosed the end off. This way? Yeah. If you're going to do this. Yeah, I know you guys didn't want a huge pitch. You wanted to. Yeah, but I'm. So, but I, and the yeah, other one, that's you, had not so much drop, in. you had so much drop on it, it was awful. Yeah, I, that, we can easily. But that's that. just my opinion. I, and I, I think part of it was reacting to. The initial design of it connecting to the garage. I think it with with the with the lower pitch, pulling it back outboard of the gutter. I can still go up to the garage though, correct? With up, my up, to, okay. up to that gutter. And then no if, you want, if you want to fill the end in, you can. To me it doesn't matter, but All right. okay. it's up to up to you. Yeah, I I we can definitely do that. That's that look not a problem. Would you like that to? would this is just a <laughs> I I think it would look more Bidding for the stable, village. Stable, yeah, more stable. Would you like to amend your application to move the post past the gutter? Yes. And then fill in the side? Yes. Steve? Yes. All right. And then we can talk. So we have the approval. Item, you all set with that? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, item GV 2205-02636, Lansing Street. I move to approve it submitted with the Applicants request to move the posts away from the garage and clear the eave line and gutter and to enclose the uh, triangular end of the roof with vertical siding. Second. Questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I have it. Motion passes. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. You guys have a great evening. Sure. Item eight, did you get your sample? Yep. Correct. Right. Uh, item 8, GV-22-05-025-567 South 5th Street. You both please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Yes. Please state your name record. I'm Patrick McBain, owner. Thank you. I'm Mark Mason, owner of APCO. Thank you. Morgan. Proposed work description. Replace the front entry door with new fiberglass door. New unit to be gelled blend Aurora glass door and made with fit and matching existing proportions. Match two inch flat exterior casing. Exterior finish to be um, not mahogany wood gray that has changed, and I will clarify that in my summary. Uh, with bronze sill and new hardware. Staff analysis the existing six panel door wood. Oh my god, sorry. Six panel wood is a non original door installed in 1974. Applicant is proposing a selection from the previously approved fiberglass door for 576 578 South 5th Street, COA number GB 1912. 008. The past May business meeting, commissioners stated that they have approved alternative door options for garages, accessory buildings, and rear elevations, but typically recommend wood for the primary entry door. Commissioners asked if applicants proposing to maintain the current screen storm door. Applicant has responded stating that the existing screen storm door will be removed. 
They'll be using a seasonal insert that will act as a screen during warmer weather. Commission also requested clarification of the existing wood trim will be maintained or if the applicant is planning on making alterations, as well as clarification of the applicant will be installing a proposed door and existing jam. Applicants stated that the existing trim will remain, including the transom, but they will be replacing the jam with new wood door jam. Um, and the door finish will be a dark green color, not the mahogany wood grain. Uh, staff does not recommend the installation of a fiberglass door for the existing front entrance of a storage structure. Staff recommends installing a wood door with a design consistent with the German Village guidelines. This is based, this is generally consistent with 3116.11, standards for alteration, number nine, and German Village guidelines, entrances and doors, page 6061. Anything else to add? No. All right. Do you have a sample? Yeah. I think there was uh, also a question about the finish. Thank you. So while the picture was wood esque, that's that's the finish. It's commission's looking at those products. So if there's any questions or comments, feel free to. Is this paintable? Yes. Oh, two. Is is the glass proposed clear different glass? Yes. Okay. Clear. Yeah, it just in terms of the door on the right there, uh, the panels um, at the top, four panels of glass. That's what it'll except it'll be clear. And because we have such a gorgeous kitchen, it'll allow all the neighbors to look in and go, wow. <laughs> That's and, with a, still. and with a key deadbolt on the inside, right? You got that right. So quick question, the, the page one um, of the application says that uh, a gel gun door has been approved in other parts of German village. That's correct. On front door locations, or have you only seen it on others? No, this is a front door. It was uh, approved at 578 uh, Brian and Crystal Santine. Uh, so they have actually uh, two front doors that were used with the gel wood products. So not the side door. No, it was a test case we talked about. We talked about, yeah, but it was a test case. Now, again, this style that they have is open glass, full pane, and center. This is the style that we're Remember, we had a big panel of Yeah, when was that? A year and a half ago? 2019. 2019. Okay, a couple of years, three years ago. Do we know how that's worked out? They just moved in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, while it was approved quite a while ago, it was only completed recently. Yeah. yeah. And the certificate expired? They, they got the permit in time. <laughs> I know. So, this is an example where we need. Three, two and three test cases. I, I personally would be happy to use this as a test case. Um, as I know, doors, front doors specifically, are things we've been concerned about for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, having walked by the uh, the property, the mentioned property, um, they haven't stood out as problematic to me, which is always a good sign. I haven't actually sat. As, Stood at it and looked up closer at it. But look at this material. It's smooth finish. It's wood like, paintable. And it's substantial. How old is this house? Yeah, 1880. 
1887. Should it's, be. It, is, yeah. it is an odd duplex in the village. Yeah, it is. Um, what direction is this front door facing? East. 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 Yeah. I, I, I just don't think a glazed door is appropriate, but that's just my opinion. Architecturally, based on style and everything else, this should be a four panel door. That's what's making it look funny to me. There aren't very many glass. Not in the style house. Not with the drink in the style. Right. Later, in different style, yeah, we did have glass. But that was more. Um, so, you know, the, the property across the street, uh, the Santines, has a transom as well. Mm -hmm. That's a different style. Different style house. Different style house architecture. Is and would you say that the closed door is any more historically egregious than uh, the six panel layer that's currently? I think it should be a four panel, it shouldn't have been a six panel. I, I'm, I'm saying, like, is, is what they're proposing? Yes, I do. I don't think it should be glazed. I really don't. I really don't. And without a storm door. That's correct. Okay. The door is the feature. You want the door to be seen. It's a nice little corner, it really is. And the improvements that have just been done, by the way, in phase one of this project are phenomenal. So the door is going to be the finishing touch. <laughs> Can't pull it up. <laughs> Comments, questions, thoughts? Um, I think the door is a reasonable product. Um, so as far as, you know, using the door as a test case, I think I have less issue with the glass. I agree with Ned that primarily front doors didn't. A lot of them did not have glass, but there also seem to be a number of them in the village that do. I'm just looking to do a quick drive by. Doors, Houston. And they're they're half glazed. Different different style of architecture house. Yeah. This doesn't have a front door. Arms is solid. Is it a similar style house divided light, but it's got two panels versus one at the bottom. Is this door available with instead of being a single panel bottom, two panel at the bottom? Is that an option of the design? Yes, it is. The half light with two panels below? Yep, it is. Then would that be no, I, just, I, I just don't think it should be placed. That's, that's, yeah. But me doing the street. View drive by with looking at adjacent houses and everything else. I I can see Ned's point. I think I'd be content if it was with it being glazed if it had the two panels at the bottom to read more towards that four panel style door versus a two panel style door. Um, so I'm not overly probably worried about the glazing, but I want to see two panels at the bottom personally. What are your thoughts on on panels and glazing? Whatnot. First. Well, 
I would agree with that. It's probably not totally appropriate, but also people want more light these days. And yeah, it's probably a lot more expensive to put glass in doors back then. So what is this door? Is this your front door going to the living room? Yes. Uh, no, it's it in, enters into the kitchen. To the kitchen. The way the uh, ground floor is, entry into the kitchen, L shaped, uh, with a living room. That's in that front L. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you just enter into. Yeah, you're in. Kitchen. You are right into the house, right there. Yeah. And uh, we moved in in 2013, and immediately redid the. Uh, Lower, lower level took out a wall, uh, put a new kitchen, and so. Yeah, I can see Anthony's points. Like if it was a two two lights and then two panels below, it'd be mm -hmm. like you took a four panel door and just replaced the top two panels with windows. Commissioner Boyd, thoughts? Well, is that an option in this door? The rep here said that it was an option for this style door to have two pin bottom. It is. Um, I'm kind of fine with it either way, but but I could I could see how having the having that two panel below is more consistent with a lot of the doors in that street. I'm not opposed to blazing. It looks like a screen door. Without <laughs> the two panels on the one. Shapiro, thoughts? Um, I guess I'm okay with it. With the two panel or as it appears. So you're okay. I'm as okay as proposed. Yeah. You're okay as proposed. You're okay as proposed or. Well, because look at it's looking more like a screen door without the two panels in the bottom. So I guess it would look more like a entry door if it had more panels. Okay. Commissioner Thiel is, is against both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only for with but, the two bottom panels. So it sounds like you've got probably not enough votes for as as posed. I think you had the votes with the two panel bottom. Yeah, I, that's not a problem. Okay, for me to uh, switch into that look. So you'd like to make the application to have the two panel that, That's fine. I'll, I'll. That's the path of least resistance. That's the path of the. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I would also propose that if, if this is approved, uh, I'd propose approving as a test case. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a list of test cases that we need to follow with you and make sure we've got the most recent ones on there. Yes. And we'll go back through and clean it. I think there's um, for clarification, would it be approval with the four light as well, or was it possibly recommended for a two light on on the top with the two panel on the bottom? Just for clarification, or me and Commissioner Goldfall. Looking around, I, I see the four lights with the two below. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with four lights. Do you have a preference for two one? So I'm okay with the two. We okay with the, the four panel, four lights. Yeah, it still looks like it's two panels. So yeah, I'm not in the Mission McCoy, four, two, one. Uh, I'm fine with four, four, no, four. two panel below. So we're okay with four, it sounds like. All right, so you want a many application to have the maintain the four panel light above to bottom panel to be two panels. Um, all right, is there a motion? I move an application number 8GB-22-05-025567 South 5th Street to approve the application as amended by the applicant to have a two-panel section in the lower half and for approval to be only as a test case for fiberglass door. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Against? Aye. Have it approval. Thank you very much. And just so you're aware, in the test case, it's basically we look at it once it's installed. We'll take a look at it sure. later and then a year after. So in your case, it's a front door. We'll walk around and take a look. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. back. Thank you.
All right, moving on to, we did nine already. We did item number 10, GV-22-05-027, 652 Mohawk Street. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Alan Gerbler. Sir? For his work description, the mature honey locust tree located on the southwest corner of the property was removed prior to approval. The tree was removed due to it being dead. The applicant believes the tree has vascular issues caused by canker decay and due to root space limitations. The past May business meeting, the commission asked if the applicant will be reinstalling the removed metal fence as well as to confirm if they are planning to put a tree back. The applicant has verified the fence will be reinstalled, but the owner does not intend to plant a canopy tree in the same location. They would like to know what the commission would approve for a tree replacement. The commission also requests the applicant to provide an arborist report, which has been provided. Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate with conditions that a tree be planted in the same location or near the original location and fence that was removed to be reinstalled in original location. This is based off of 3116.13 standards for site improvements, letter A and letter C. Anything else to add? No, I don't. Uh, I, I believe they did put the fence back, and they are interested in a canopy tree to shade your house. Soon. Uh, questions, comments from the commission? I, I can tell you the tree died. It took about three years for it to go, but it died of natural causes. <laughs> yeah, they contacted us because it's dropping limbs in the street yeah. and the sidewalk. So I apologize for the things backwards. I mean, should have gotten it before. It just slipped my mind. True. That's why I'm here instead of them. Uh, have they indicated a uh, replacement tree you're looking? For? They were wanting to choose from the list that you would recommend. Mission Core, do you have any recommendations for that location? Well, it looks pretty tight. Um, I'm wondering about potentially a Zalkova, something that's more day-shaped and wouldn't spread as much as a honey locust. I think what else would be stay, not shave. I mean, sure. Zalkovas do well. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell from the pictures, there, but there's a good-sized retaining wall right behind this. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's trying to be reworked. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's I'm not quite sure how the tree got planted there to begin with. The embankment that goes up to the house, it's steep. I'm just pointing that out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other option would be to potentially put. Bring the wall to the back of the fence and plant the tree higher so that it has more, you know, roots, root zone that's closer to the surface. Because that retaining wall is going to be problematic of root development behind it. But if you brought the whole thing up, do they re establish the grade and put something on top? Yeah, that's that's what I think would be would be healthier for a tree. So if I could make a recommendation, if we move on this, um, I think we could probably in, in the, the uh, motion identify that a tree to go back as identified by the by the applicant, um, and that whatever grading landscaping required to ensure the long term longevity of said tree should be part of that replacement. And for our purposes, do we? Like we, without seeing any kind of plan, we can't really talk to where the tree needs to go. Uh, if they need to come back to us for an application for that, I think they, they can. But I would say that just part of the part of our motion is to put one back. Yes. Cool. They need to consult with a landscape designer or someone who can recommend a tree that's on the applicant to put them back, as long as it's a you know, big shade tree. That works, yeah. Well, that's it. Is there is there a motion? Oh, Mr. Chilon, GB twenty two oh five dash oh two five five sixty seven. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong one here. 
And number 10. Yes, thank you. I apologize. GV 2205027652 Mohawk Street. The move it be approved as submitted with the recommendation of an appropriate tree that is a shade tree in that location. Which may require landscaping okay. to provide the longevity of the century. Yeah, you have to go. All right. Is there a second? Second. Questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I have that motion passes. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, moving on to item number 11 uh, GB 22 05 028 772 South 4th Street. Let the record show that Tim Bidler had previously sworn in, so we'll consider him still sworn in. Swear again. Much. <laughs> proposed work description. Applicant is proposing to create two separate garden beds with brought iron garden fence between the sidewalk and curb. Measurements for the two beds will be six feet by 30 inches and eight feet by 30 inches with a 19 inch tall fence surrounding them. Plant Japanese spurge inside a garden border fence, which will be in the space between front of house and sidewalk. Add Belden Bellcrest 560 pavers between garden border fence, west side and curb, 15 feet by 19 inches. Um, at the May business meeting, commissioners requested applicant to verify where the provided example brought iron garden fence has been installed. Fence has been installed in front of 700 South 5th Street. Staff has verified that the fence was approved in 2015, number 15931. Commission also requested applicant to confirm that the sidewalk is remaining the same size. Staff recommends approval of annual clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificate with conditions to be approved without the installation of broader garden fencing in the row. This is based off of German Village Guidelines Accessibility, page 129, number 8. Anything else to add? Um, no. Right. Questions, comments from the Commission? Make the note that the 18-inch minimum from the from the face of the curve would have been kept, which is typically something we asked for in the past. Is the uh, limestone earth being repaired? Sandstone, yes. Is it sandstone? That's my. Everything works out, it'll be done this summer. <laughs> Columbia Gas is tearing up the street right now. Sidewalks. Seems like they've been there quite a while. Do you know that, you know that uh, society has put out a, a good article and, and, and neighbors neighbors in the past about tiers of sandstone curb decay, which ones the cities will, city will replace and which ones they won't. I think yours falls underneath the, uh, the top tier that the city should be taking care of. So. Yeah, from my understanding, uh, we, I've got approval from the um, landscaper. He's got approval to uh, end sandstone to replace it. Oh, okay. cool. Great. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a mess, but. <laughs> this is one of my pet thieves, but this, uh, this house was a victim of the curb ramp replacement. With that yeah. horrible concrete curve there, that's you know landscape curve that was put in, drives me crazy. Right. If there's no uh, objections or, or comments, is there a motion, Mr. Chairman? On item GV twenty two oh five zero twenty eight seven seventy two South Fifth Street, I move to approve this submitted. Second. So, any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against. I say the motion passes. All right, thank mm -hmm. you. Moving to item number 13, GB-22-05-030, 708 City Park. Once you're settled, if you please raise your right hand. The other right, there you go. <laughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Thank you. And please state your name for the record. Daniel May. Thank you, sir. According to what the current. <laughs> Um, proposed work description applicants proposing to install 15 feet by 27 feet, 405 square feet patio to be made of Bellcrest 760 clay pavers with permeable gravel and sand base at the east end of the rear yard to build Indiana limestone wall that will be six inches tall to be installed around beds and patio 170 inches long 
add new plans for submitted design. Staff requested further information about the existing conditions that involve the fencing and fence enclosure on the side of the property line. Applicant confirmed that the fencing layout will remain the same when installing the stone wall garden uh, bed as seen in the proposed site plan. Staff recommends approval of annual clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate. The proposed work is generally consistent with 31-16-13 standards of site improvements, letter A. Anything else to add? Questions, comments from the commission? So what is the existing patio stage yes. right now? Grass. I mean, in where the fireplace is. Oh, it's a bell grass 760-ish. Okay, so you're just trying to match that. Best I can. We'll pull some of it up, pull some of mine, blend them together. Just got to stack them. Up. Anything on your end? That looks good to me. Oh, Mr. Chairman, item GV 2205030708 City Park Avenue. I move to approve as submitted. Second. Any questions on the motion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Let's have the motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Number 14, GV 22 05 031 225 Lear Street. Please raise your right hand. Please swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. I do, William Hugus, architect. Thank you very much. And this is a conceptual application of the proposed work description. Applicant is proposing to add a room above existing frame to car garage and to raise the roof pitch to 1012. Add shed dormer to north side only and discuss a bath or no bath to the additional room. The past May business meeting, Commission requested applicant to submit a photo of the main house. Commission also noted that typically the garage would be alley facing, but there is not an alley behind the garage. Dormer could be visible from the street view. Commission should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at future GBC meetings. No action is required. That's the head. Uh, no, I think the unusual condition is. It's not facing an alley, and most of the rooms above garages that I've been aware of have been on alleys. There's only one, and I submitted that. Uh, it's on 6th Street. Oh, yes. I submitted that picture. It was done by Mr. Lennox probably 15 years ago. But it's the only one in the whole village, and it's a very tall structure. We're, we're only proposing some kind of storage room. This family has three cars, all sorts of crazy games and toys, and they have a lousy basement in the house. It's shallow. So they wanted to know about the possibility of some kind of space above the garage. Um, and I really couldn't answer that because it's, it's never been done by me. I would propose merely taking the roof, the current roof off and putting a 12 inch floor joists and then doing a slightly steeper roof pitch um, so as not to bother the neighbor to the south, which is uh, 220 Jay Panzer's old house. And I know um, Bourbon Order is doing some work on that and we'll be glad to share whatever if it goes ahead with them. But um, my only idea was to put some kind of shed wall dormer on the north side facing their own driveway. Just comments from the commission. If it's merely a room, it will not take a variance. This commission can do it. If they decide they want a toilet and sink, that would be a BZA, I believe. If it's any more than that, it would be city council, but I believe, I would be surprised if they want to put the money in a bathroom up there. So the height that you think about putting this up to? Pardon? What's the, what's the current height and what's the height you're looking to go up to with it? Right, the ridge. The building's 22 feet deep. It's currently got a 912 root pitch 
and the spring line for that roof is eight, eight and a half feet, maybe nine feet. Um, we'd be going up to uh, 10 feet one or two and doing a 10, 12 roof pitch. So I would say around two feet, it'd be increased ridge height. You said is it is a nine twelve on there currently? It's a nine twelve, I believe, on the current garage. Proof submittal from back in twenty thirteen says seven. Is that still? Pardon. So the approved documents from back in two thousand thirteen say seven twelve. Well, it could be. I guess. Okay. I, I tried to count siding, but the neighbors are on a trip, and I couldn't get into their yard. But it, it would be between two and three feet taller from the ridge, from what I can tell. Um, so the view from the neighbors of the south would be the same roof, just slightly taller and uh, a little steeper. Would you maintain the overhangs? The sketch sent to us has. I yeah, it's close on two property lines, so the overhang is going to be limited. It's less than three feet on both side yard and backyard. I think so, yeah. So it would have minimal overhangs if it were to happen. Be clear about that. This is my neighbor to my east, and I'm doing this as a favor so I can retire. <laughs> Favors to retire? Yeah, this is the last thing, and then I'm done. Famous last word in that. Yeah, that's not what they were I'm not yeah. sure how this is working, Bill. I'm trying to get people to do favors for me to facilitate my retirement. Not yeah. the other way around. Their new neighbors are very nice, so I thought I would try to accommodate them. <clears throat> so this don't run the entire length, essentially. Well, it, the, the, the shed dormer, I typically cut them back yeah, yeah. three or four feet on each end. So it still reads as a gable end. And I would typically set the wall of the dormer back from the front wall of the garage by a foot or so. So it, it shows more roof line below the dormer. It's a new garage. Yeah, essentially. But it's a garage, keep it simple. Um, and that's as far as I've gotten with it. So we, we've had garages. Where the doors are facing the alley and the dormer is on the yard side. This it just happens to be a odd location where the doors are facing the yard side. Yeah. And it's behind a, a gated fence area. It's so the intent was so the, the neighbor to the rear has the same view more or less. It has a view uh, of only a roof and a wall. Not windows. Yeah. It can't have any windows due to code, zone of code. Oh, so the dormer won't have any windows. Dormer would have windows, but the dormer's facing their own yard. Okay, if we're facing the other way, it'd be too close. And... It would have to, and, and I want to avoid that. The only other option would be to raise the spring line and we have two foot high knee walls and then do a roof pitch, maybe with no dormer uh, at all, but I'm not bothered by the dormer facing their own yard. And, especially and the dormer is going to have windows or not mm -hmm. the dormer is going to have windows or not it probably have yeah. three windows given the length of the oh, yeah okay yeah for, for some reason i thought you said nothing. on the south side facing panzer's old house it couldn't have anything yeah, yeah. and facing franklin art glass which is its east neighbor couldn't have anything It's funny because it definitely is not built where the approved location was. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, really? and I'm I'm thinking. Um, Steve, the, are you aware that the fence for Mr. Panzer is in the wrong location? Yes. Yeah. Oops. We just discovered that too. So we'll have to fix that. Looks like the garage was. Three foot six off of the 
east left property line, three foot one off the back line. Yeah. And the ASPO currently is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah. Not raising stink. I'm just, there's a different condition that we're looking at. There was a big barn in the back of this house originally. Any feedback problems with what's being proposed? Is it something that could be considered? I would say yes. Yeah, I have no objection. All right. Unless as a favor to you, you want us to say no. I would have given you hints beforehand. Okay. All right. I, just, <laughs> I suspected as much. Officially, yeah. the commission does not do favors. Well, I understand. <laughs> True. But so, to get him to retire, I just have to. There you go. Be clear for those who may be attending. All right, so I can pass on to the owners that you would consider something. I don't care. That's a, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Item 15, uh, GB-22-05-032, 757 and 756 Macon Alley. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Jonathan Oath. I'm sure you're here. Morgan. Proposed work description. Applicant is proposing to construct a 1.5 story addition to connect the adjacent homes at 757 and 767 Macon Alley. Proposed addition will be set back from the existing alley and will be wood or boral, board and batten. The exterior will include appropriate skirting, trim, and corner boards consistent with the area. Small dorm room with a low slope roof will be protected by membrane roof. The other exterior finishes will be GAF slate line shingle roofing, Marvin signature ultimate clad windows, metal OG gutters to match existing, and classic rock face molded block foundation. The past May business meeting, Commission requested that the applicant provide additional photos of both of the property's elevations along the street view, which applicant has. Commissioner stated that a challenge will be the proposed connector. Um, that the proposed connector will be below the primary structure and is now making the previous addition taller than the primary structures. Since they are both two separate structures, this will be a unique case. Staff does not support the design of connecting the two separate properties. Commission should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at a future GBC meeting. This is based off 31-16-12 standards for new construction, letter F and K, and the proposed work is generally consistent with German Village guidelines. New buildings, garages, page 13, number two, no action required. Leave. Anything else to add? Nope. Question comes to the commission. This is essentially allowing a connected garage. A really big connected garage. And there's living space above right. this. But it essentially then becomes you could actually live in the two buildings as is. You just have to park the car in the garage and then walk outside to the house. The the larger of the two on the left is the, the current owner's primary structure. Okay. Um, it is a it, it does have four garages, but it um, it's a large home that they've had for several years now. Yeah, it was built that way by the whites, I believe. I believe so. In, uh, and it has a big single floor at the back. Yeah. Yeah, but it's that's a primary. So I'm just yeah, I figured it would <laughs> but I wasn't sure if like it was just yeah. going to function as the garage, but right. that, that's the main part of the house, and they just want to connect right. it to yeah, the they, they small the, historic house. <laughs> they had the opportunity to acquire the neighboring one, and uh, just for additional square footage and change in living, you know, situation, that they wanted to use the opportunity to connect those. We have discussion about tunnels once. Mm -hmm. Discussion about tunnels once. Tunnels? Somebody wanted to connect their historic house to a garage and it exists. Only, yeah, the only way visually it would work is if they built a tunnel. The, the house on the corner north. Yep. Yeah, okay. I know. <laughs> yeah, so with this one, and again, touching on that, even you know, not proposing that, but the um, the left, the larger home that you see now is majority of that is slab on grade under those four garages. It's just the center that goes down and connects into that single story that's off of the rear left, the southern portion.
Um, to me, this connection seems pretty sensitive to the guidelines. I mean, it's staying, it's staying back from the historic structure. The porch is remaining on the historic structure. So looking at the floor plan, looking at the So on the first page, middle picture, looks like the rear of the original structure on the right, only a single story addition. Correct. That uh, we're not sure of the year of that addition, but there is a single story uh, kitchen and powder room off the rear. So looking at the floor plan, looks like the proposed connection piece is tying in partially to the original brick structure and partially to that one floor addition of indeterminate age at this point. Looking at the elevation, it's a two floor connector being proposed. Right. How is that going to work with that addition piece back there? So we're actually the with the front being, you know, a two story or one and a half story on the rear, we're actually bringing that, that rear roof line down to a single story in the back to kind of respect that addition that's off to the side. What we're not seeing is a, a second floor plan in any materials. I'm trying to understand how it's tying together. You know, one of the things we look at is Tying into the roof line, how that engages. Right now, it would appear that the, the pitch, the roof line is going to kind of. Don't know how that's going to interact with the existing higher roof and then the lower roof. You know, that also it uh, the. In relation to the smaller. Home that's on the, the right, the rear roof line will. Come down and cross that eave before the end of that existing second floor roof, if that makes sense, to, you know, to avoid that exposed gable end on the rear. So it, the, the second floor of the addition isn't that large because of that, that roof on the rear coming down much further. It's, you know, it, the main thing is to be able to connect through the house on the living the second floor living of the, the larger structure connecting back. So it's while the first floor, you know, is a, a decent amount of space. The second story of that is a much smaller footprint because of that. What that roof is doing. The, the rear of that roof as well in relation to the larger structure, we don't break that roof line. So if we're keeping we're keeping the connecting eave under the larger roof line on both sides and within the boundaries of the, the smaller second story roof line. So the second floor of the addition is lower than the second floor of the house to the north. Uh, it is. So there's a uh, three foot change from the larger home to the smaller one. Uh, going upward, so we're we're right now we're looking at you know splitting the difference of that having the connector one foot up from the larger home and then you know, two feet down from the the neighboring one. My, my biggest two hurdles and in my mind I'm facing right now, one is while one is a home with garage doors on the facade, the appearance is connecting a house to the garage, which we typically don't do. So that's one hurdle to overcome. Two, 
when we're trying to connect structures, separate structures, trying to prevent just an ever increasing wall of opacity. And when we see structures connected, it's never this far apart, <laughs> typically. Um, and it's usually most successful with some kind of transparency. And obviously we're doing board and batten, which just reinforces the solidness of this. Those are my two hurdles to, to get past with the proposed conceptual here. I'm not sure how to do that. No, we, we appreciate that. Um, I think the original, you know, our in discussing with the owner and the thoughts of it, you know, for how much glazing that was or was not, we were trying to, you know, downplay the connection as much as possible without being, you know, without being bland. Um, so having, you know, those smaller windows that are more in line with what you would see in the village versus, you know, in, on the rear, you can see in the plan, we are doing, you know, a, a large roping into their private backyard. So keeping that focus that way, instead of having a, a, you know, a large glass breezeway connecting the two of these. Conceptual would like to see more elevations, yeah, et cetera, and roof lines, stuff like that. I, I think, I think the only thing, and it's really, I mean, the Smiths built a four car garage with a double entry out of 1960s, 70s, and made it work on that alley. It's always been the odd thing. Even the house next door is odd because the front, what should be the living room in that house on the corner is actually the garage. So you get two houses there that are odd. Uh, I don't know how you ever, ever get around what you're saying, Anthony, as far as adding a garage, attaching a garage to a house, because it's, it's, this is such a freaking outlier. Yeah. The fact that it's got four garages, you know, um, I, I would just like to see, I, I have no problem with the board and batten. I like the fact that that board and batten is in the back because it's playing down the significance of it. The, the odd thing for me is where that horizontal floorboard is. Okay. I would like to see how that relates more to the little house rather than being an intermediate piece trying to be in between the two. Okay. And for and that's just you, the first floor or the second floor or both? Second floor. Okay. First floor, first, first floor is fine. And it's, it's, we are not just that, that little thing to me, it looks like it should relate more to the porch in some way. Okay. Even yeah. though I know it doesn't get to the porch. Yeah. But that's why I like to see more elevation. Yeah. We can definitely look at that. We were, it, it landed in that spot going off of, you know, an eight foot dimension of the, the wood, which is in our, you know, we can get something larger like, to address that. Totally just aesthetics. I think it's the distance between that and the top of the window below is, is short to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, we can definitely look at that. And I just like to see those elevations and stuff. I don't know how you. There, we've, we have them, you know, not with me today, but no, I know. it's yeah. some definite gymnastics, but it, we're, we're really pleased with how it works that we're not, you know, we're not disrespecting either of the homes in our opinion. Yeah, I'd also be interested in how that connector works with um, thinking it's the north facade, that building where it attaches in terms of the windows. Because it looks like it's attaching yeah, we, pretty much on the center line of the gable, isn't it? In relation to the larger home, yeah, it uh, and that dimension, you know, that it lands in the in the center wasn't the driving one. Uh, we were looking at the usable space and being able to keep those eaves separated um, mm -hmm. up above. There's also some additional windows that are on that second floor that we were looking to, you know, utilize the one as the connection while not affecting the other. Down below, there is one that would have to be filled in, but that, you know, with that not being um, as old of a home or as historic, that we were comfortable posing, breaking up that one versus trying to do something similar on the, the more historic building. We wanted to avoid those windows and, and have to try to match that. 
Yeah, it would just be good to see it illustrated. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely uh, have that for you in both directions, showing showing how that connects. Just, just would be nicer. Yeah. Part of me is wondering if it's if it's that middle band that's really throwing things off for me because it's like with the that connection piece, it's like it's trying to the gutter line is trying to align to the two, but the roof line is trying to be down. That that horizontal piece is trying to read not quite floor of the left, but not quite ceiling roof of the right. It just seems to not know what it wants to mm -hmm. relate to. And it just I think that's what's kind of throwing me off. Okay. That just yeah, we can, we can definitely look at that. Um, it was we were surprised at how close the the two building eaves were. No, you know, knowing what the difference was in the floor heights. Um, so and seeing that we were tying into the one that's what we drove on that side to the larger house that it's disconnected there. And you would never actually read that it's in that same. So I wonder if just look better if you just remove that horizontal band and just treated it as a single one and a half story volume. Even though it might actually be too big, it's too vertical. Yeah. yeah, that was that would be my concern. It would seem on the verdict. I, think Actually, the other, I just like to see the rest of the elevations. Even mm -hmm. the original four car garage house. Yep. I think that, yeah, I think that's worth elevation of that. The other thing that's throwing me that. off on this elevation is, is that little that what once the adorner piece is in line with the facade. So it's just kind of cutting that that overhang gutter run. It's, it's not it's not like you typically see. Typically, the dormers are set back from the, from the principal facade. So it's just pieces that just don't seem to be speaking the same language. So is that second floor aligned with the wall below, or is it set back? Of the connection? Of the connector. Yeah, the connection is in line. Okay. And on the rear, is it also the full depth, or is it? Uh, no, the rear, on the rear, the second floor is, is not as deep. Okay, so that's it's where bringing, the depth yeah, is. Bringing that that roof comes all the way down to to be a single so story. So it's like a big salt box roof. Yeah, kind of like that, yes. It's not ball. <laughs> It's yep. Yeah, it, it's no, definitely a that house. Always has been. Yeah. It's a great house. Just nothing like it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments, feedback? Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, and then we have item number sixteen, DBE dash two two dash zero five dash zero three three. Alpha and a Bravo. Can you please raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth of the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. <clears throat> Steve Hurd with Urban Order Architecture. Proposed work description. Askin is proposing to replace two windows and an entrance door on each elevation of the frame addition with six new Marvin aluminum clad wood windows from the approved list. Install a new full light entrance door on the south elevation of the existing frame addition. The addition of a new flat roof porch hood over the new entrance door. Remove and replace the existing rear porch with Julia balcony railings. New railings will be horizontal steel. The past May business meeting, Commissioner requested photos to be marked up to specify which windows they are proposing to add. Commissioner stated that the proposed Julia balcony will be on the rear of the addition to the main structure, which will which can be discussed further at the hearing. They additionally asked for clarification of the proposed door installation, which staff explained will be installed where an existing window is located on the south elevation. Staff recommends the commission should offer design feedback that can be utilized for the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at future GBC meeting. No action required. Yep. So we right now, <clears throat> as everyone is probably aware, this house has many, many layered additions on it. And through that process, I believe all the windows are different sizes and they're sort of randomly located. And we've got this big wall that connects the original house to this attached garage. Um, and we just wanted to make some sense of that and get some order and some additional windows. 
And <clears throat> currently the door opens directly onto the driveway. So there's not space for a stoop or anything there. Um, and it, we just want to reorient the back door to where that, that coil of hose is. And then put a, a very simple flat porch hood on in between those two addition pieces. Um, <clears throat> so that's, oh, and then the Juliet balcony exists, but there's this pressure treated and metal weird railing on it now. So we want to replace that, but there's also a two story um, back porch that is literally rotting off of the house and we want to replace that that entire structure <clears throat> right now it's built flush with the interior floors so i believe that's part of the reason that the existing french doors are rotten and the, the structure of this porch is rotten um, so we're proposing to replace that Questions, comments, feedback from the commission. Could you go over again where this back door thing is? Because I'm not clear in looking at the drawings. I think I know, but the the driveway side back door. <clears throat> There's a photo that has a window with a reel of of hose below it. Mm -hmm. So right there. So we're replacing that that window. Okay, yeah, that's a window right now. That's a window. It's going to be a door. Image yeah. four. Gotcha. Okay, and a stoop. A stoop. So we okay. can have a real stoop. I got it. Yeah, I didn't show the existing porch on the south elevation so that you could see what we were trying to accomplish there. Got it. Uh, which what is the entrance door on the east elevation of the frame addition to be replaced? Is there a door actually facing east? There are two doors at the existing porch um, that are four panel doors from not very long ago. No, 2007. So not playing at the wrong. One of them is boarded up on the inside, and we're going to open it up again. And we wanted to get more more glass. Well, we can go back to the hose reel picture on page four. Uh, so that photo. So there's a so the, 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 the window where the hose reel is supposed to put the door there. Yes. On your elevations, on the east elevation, you're showing that the tiny little window on the wall that turns being a larger window and a window on the first floor as well. So yes. you talked about poking two holes, two new windows, in addition to that window becoming a door. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And on the the little elevation piece where we're putting the new door and the window we're proposing that we would trim that out with the flat panel and turn the corner and do the same thing to sort of bracket that hole i believe it was a stair addition when they put the second floor on the garage maybe it's hard to tell there's we have a lot of conflicting drawings so right now that entire facade when you Hose real wall, you go turn the corner to run back north. That entire wall is just horizontal siding with a couple of windows. Uh, so you're, Correct. you're trying to do like a, a panel then in the back, a set of panels. Yeah. Is we've got some new windows, we've got some replacing windows, we've got some changing sizes. Yes.
but the dog wash shower staying. <laughs> I did shower. <laughs> See, I think I really have a problematic with this all. One question on the primary facade, very top, the two tiny windows up top that you're proposing to replace. Right now, they've got shutters and louvers. Are they, do we know if there's an original window up there behind those shutters, or is that? There are. So the original windows that are up there. Oh, there, there are there's no windows in that, in those openings. Yeah. There's. There's a mechanical chase right behind that facade. I don't know. So, my exhaust intake louvers, or is it just solid? There would be no reason for that, but that's what it seems. As long as there's not an original windows in those openings behind those. It's interesting. Well, it's very weird. Shutters, whatever it is, I think that's okay. It's just. No, there, and then there's two other shutter windows that Morgan and I already dealt with. Yeah, so there has been a, a COA approved for some of the replacement windows so far on the property. Okay. That includes the two added shutters and then on the west elevation. For those have been shuttered as well. There's one that was walled over in what is the kitchen. And when we took the shutters off of that, there was a there was a vinyl window. Well, inside in there. Mm -hmm. Inside. Inside, yes. Yeah. Shutter, final window, wall. And <clears throat> no, I don't know if that, that's so bad. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So should we talk more about the doors? Yeah, so that'll be a, a separate. Well, so that's the, let me ask another question. Yes. So the other thing when we're when we had the Marvin window, people come out and look at all of the windows. There are replacement windows in the original house, and they're five years, mm -hmm. and they're deteriorating. So we're dealing with Marvin to get those windows replaced as well. And the owner wanted to ask if we could look at a two over two window, which is what exists on the house right next door. And <clears throat> I didn't ask Morgan if she had any historic photos, but I can't find anything. But I just wanted to see if the commission was open to putting two over two windows everywhere since we're replacing all the windows again. And what would be involved in that? Just, I gotta ask, did you check to see if the society had any pictures? I put the owner on the task of that. Um, I just went and looked at the old realtor stuff from the library. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. He's usually really, really good at research. So it would seem reasonable to me that they probably were two over two. It would seem, or maybe way. two over one, but certainly that for the age of the house. So I guess the specific question is, are you open to that? And what is the requirement? So I just ask for, do you need more documentation? If I can't get more documentation, back to one of the Make a case for why, to me, make a case for why two over two would be appropriate. Going back from what has been obviously replacement with us. Yeah, I don't know what was there before. You? I do not. I didn't see any reference to two over two. Uh, but when I was looking through his files, I was looking more for those replacement windows. So they were originally for, I think, the vinyl that were there previously. That would make yeah. sense since there's remnants of vinyl windows other places. So I'm guessing the vinyls are from the these probably. Yeah, I think so. So I wonder if the prior owner has any photos, historic photos of the house. That'd be a person to, <laughs> since I think we know how to get in touch with him. And there has been a COA issue for the replacement windows. So if we do have documentation, I can easily adjust that in your COA speed, but um, I'm not sure how the commission would like to proceed. 
Okay. Great. So, I would give one more recommendation when doing some of the history digging. This is right next to Franklin Art Glass. You might find some photos of the front of Franklin Art Glass that might show some pictures of the front of this house. Maybe. Yeah, that is a good idea. Thank you. I get you all the evidence you can to, to find what you need. Yeah. Um, anything else on the alpha portion of this before we go over to Bravo, which is, which is the five of course. Anything else you're looking from us? Yeah. Okay. Then we'll talk about uh, item B, which is the fiberglass doors. Yes, um, this is request for action, not a conceptual. Um, applicant is proposing to remove non original wood doors and transoms and replace with three quarter light smooth barber glass doors and transom on the main entrance of east elevation. Uh, the existing wood four panel doors and transoms on the east elevation were replaced in 2007, number 07321. Staff has added this item as an action on the agenda to open the material choice up for discussion to keep the project moving. Uh, staff does not recommend the installation of fiberglass doors and original brick openings. Staff does recommend the proposed style of door to be wood in lieu of fiberglass. Basis of this staff recommendation is proposed work is generally consistent with 31.16.11, standards for alteration number nine, and German village guidelines, entrances, entrances and doors, page 16 for 61. My one comment from the commission is typically last meeting we talked about test cases, we would like to have three. Ahmed, from the earlier application, you were looking at four panel door as a preference as opposed to a lighted door. Are you proposing to have lighted doors in this location? There's currently four panels. Yes. Okay. So I will, I guess the question to the commission is, is this case of having a additional test case with the light? Or is that too many test cases at this point in time? I don't think whether doors have lights or not is a test case. Yeah. That's a decision about material sense. Yeah. yeah. That's that's an architectural thing that the commission should be able to make a determination with. So we've identified two, Morgan. Is there another one you know of that's floating out there? The only one would be the other South Fifth Street, the 576, 578. Um, I can't remember if that was a test case, if that was on the list that I've sent you previously, but I can look into that. That's the only one I can. I see on the list, so like okay. maybe we're stuck through, or yeah. we can treat it test cases. It's there. Mm -hmm. So, are we talking about this because it's a front door? It's a primary structure, historic structure. Number one, two, it's definitely visible from the street from the side, tucked around the side, but visible from the street. There's only addition portion, different conversation. And this is just to change it up, to put a light in it, that's all. The doors, the existing doors are good. The, no, the existing doors are, they were installed with the brick mold on top of the old casing and there's some paint by number transom stained glass thing. And we'll see that. Maybe. It's all, there's really, really wonky. Not an official word, but. Actually, an architectural really? term. <laughs> really? Because our first approach was just to replace the slab, but there are more. And there's a there's a weird transition from the door to the transom, which makes the transom really squat, and there's too much head casing, so. Agree with everything you're saying. Yeah. Sort of surprising how that piece kind of looking at it. Kind of cult together. Yes. So, like I said, our original idea was just to replace the door, which is also deteriorating. <clears throat> at the where the side jams hit the the uh, metal sill.
And as I said, one of those doors is, is walled over on the inside. We're sort of switching <clears throat> how you enter the house. So we want to go through the door where the wall is. And a lot of it is to get light and be more welcoming. And I understand the point that there's a lot of four panel doors on the front of, of these houses, but I think this is a different, uh, different situation. But if you said originally the deal was to replace the door slab itself, like right now and kind of do the entire trim. Yes. Is that going to be wood trim or is it going to be? Yes, wood. And as far as the transom goes, is that going to be replacing the transom, leaving the transom? If what's so I want to, I want to set a sash in the transom. Right now it's, uh, it's that decorative glass. Direct access. Thing that we submitted. Did we submit a sheet sign in this a door and transom? Um, I don't believe on the transom for the door, the three quarter lift door, yes. I can I can get that information. Yeah. We're we're making progress with windows. I think and then the past what we found is is trying to make sure that the Transom's the right size in relation to all the trim and the, the meeting, all the parts and pieces are there, especially with the arch top. Like seeing the drawing detail, how that all is all going to fit, dimensions and everything else. I wouldn't feel comfortable approving until we saw all that as a thing. Okay. Yeah, I can get that. <clears throat> as you can see, it's not right now. Thoughts on the door? I mean, as opposed to what I said about the other door earlier, I mean, I, I think this is Queen Anne vernac vernacular, real vernacular, real simple Queen Anne. But I think it's about the right size. The fact that it's wide doors, to me, a Queen Anne with a big door like that would have a half place door. Mm -hmm. With a very fancy bottom panel, maybe this may not be that fancy of a house that it could have afforded that, but. There's a tendency for it to be a going storm. The other door is too narrow, in my opinion. Yeah. Too narrow for it to be a going storm. <laughs> Anything else? Feedback from us? Yep, I think I'm good. So, was the second one for action? Uh, yes, so 33B is for action um, at request of applicant and discussion with staff. The 33A was just conceptual. Like this to continue B, or can we just move it to conceptual view of the table? I would like to get it approved. I have a cut sheet. Don't have the. I don't need the trans. Cut sheet transom yeah. and the opening detail of how it's all going to come together. That's what you don't have, and that's what I would need to approve. Yeah. Okay. I would recommend continuing this just because it is a request for action yeah. um, until we have the materials so we could continue to next month, but. Of course, ultimately, so I would have, I have to come back with the doors. Wait. Oh, it's something we typically have on the doors of the Yeah, especially and, it's, and it, it's unfortunate because I have that information. I thought I what, whatever. I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> if you can do, I, mean, I agree with everything you're saying about the door. I want to see the cut sheet that says you're not doing it again. Right. That's all. Yeah, I've, I've had endless conversations with with the window person about this. So, so you would like us to continue the application? Sure. Yes. Is there a motion, Mr. Chairman? Item GB twenty two oh five zero three three B two twenty Sycamore Street. I move to continue at the request of the applicant. Second. Any questions on the motion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Against? I have it. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Favor? <laughs> Aye. Against? Too bad. Okay, I got a flaw. Do you clarification? Do you find me that you could flaw? Everyone, everyone. Just like the choices. Okay. <laughs> when they do. Thank you. Okay. You see, we're going to be a shortcut page. Products, office hours tonight. More. Evening still, so I've got to make myself available in the evening. Oh, God. How much longer? Probably a year. 